Hello and welcome from the India Art Collective. My name is Avni Doshi coming to you from Mumbai. Today we're speaking to Diana Campbell, curator and consultant and director of Creative India Foundation. Today Diana is going to speak to us about what collectors look for when they're buying a work of art. Thank you for being with us, Diana. Thanks for having me, Avni. Um, advising a client on a work of art is a very personalized process. Um, something that I might respond to might not be something that the collector responds to. So it has to be something that catches my brain, something that I respond to emotionally every time I see it and don't get bored of, but something that I know would I guess, affect my client's thinking in a special way. And the second thing, it needs to fit into the overall collection that they already have. How does this fit into the artist's overall body of work? How does this fit into the collector's existing collection? Um, things like that are two of the main things I think about when recommending um, a work of art. Um, I think art fairs are a very necessary part of collecting. As much as we'd like to be, we really can't be everywhere at once. Um, so I can know everything that's going on. I could have seen all the exhibitions in Bombay, but there are similar things going on in Bangalore, similar things going on in Delhi, similar things going on in Hyderabad, and even outside the country, similar things going on in South America, Korea, all over the world. So art fairs are a wonderful venue to see you know, the best. A lot of the art market is about education. If you don't see new faces or new names or new works, um, the body, I mean, Indian art as a whole isn't going to develop. So I think that the internet is a great way to widen the scope of information that's out there. Srinivasa Prasad out of Bangalore, um, I think he's been really underhyped. His last show at Gallery Ski was amazing. Um, and he's going to be getting a lot more international exposure over the next year. Um, the sculptures and photographs are just beautiful and he really tries to capture um, I think, you know, human spirituality, which could be Indian, it could be Western, it's, it could capture that common human element. Um, another artist would be Neha Choksi. Um, she recently showed at the Freeze Art Fair um, a beautiful concrete sculpture, and I think that um, with outdoor sculpture in India, um, conservation is a big issue, and she really has a command of her materials. Um, so I think that she's someone that's, you know, very skilled and um, will go a long way in that avenue. Um, Another artist who I love is Manish Nai. Um, I think it's amazing how he walks across so many mediums, be it the jute cube sculptures, the wall murals, um, where he paints on a wall and it's 2D but it looks like there are lines popping out at you. He plays with your sense of perspective, which I love. Um, he's also starting to work on a new body of drawings, which are um, beautiful as well. The first piece of advice I would give is don't think of art as an investment. Buy something because you love it and you want to live with it. Like whether the price goes up, down, stays the same, you should love it the same amount. Um, if you start that way, you're in the right direction. Um, the second piece of advice would be, you know, buy young artists, but buy multiple works of theirs over the years. You amass a collection of works of an artist and you're almost part of the journey. You can see how their works develop over time. Like when they get a new opportunity, you almost feel like you're part of it. And it's a really engaging way to stay involved. Um, you know, with the art world's development. And the third piece of advice is don't be afraid to think of things other than canvases. Um, there's amazing video, sculpture, installation, sound art. I mean, there are a variety of mediums and um, they need a lot more support than canvases do. So um, you can get a lot of value that way. 